Just when I was about to start messing around, Elemental just dropped the 3.14 beta version and we're going to have a look at it right now. To get it, you got to go over to your WordPress, go to Elemental, go to Tools, go to the Version Control tab and enable beta testing. Now, we do strongly recommend you only do this on testing or staging sites. Never do it on your full-blown production live site because there could be problems with that. Once you've done that, go over to your WordPress dashboard because you're already going to be there and then go and click update and then make sure you update both Elemental and Elemental Pro to 3.14 beta. After doing that, make sure in your Elemental features, which you go to by going to WordPress Elemental settings, go to the features tab, make sure you've got Flexbox container and nested element and grid container as well if you want all activated. You should already be using them, but if not, make sure they're activated. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the new nested carousel. By the way, it's only called carousel, so if you type in nested you might not get it we were used to the sliders the image the testimonial carousel but now you can basically create whatever you want however you want just using this widget from the get-go you're going to get free slides you can duplicate delete add whatever you want into slide one i can basically add whatever I want. We'll drop in an image, drop in a heading, and we'll even add in a button as well. Now do remember, this is not the loop carousel where you could use a loop grid to pull back products or posts or even a custom post type. You can build this however you want. So if you want to have a slider that has a certain look, I mean, slide two is going to be just an image and slide three is now going to be just text and a button or no button or 20 buttons. You can mix and match all you want. In the past, when we were trying to be really customized, say with a testimonial carousel, you might go and create templates and then stick them in as a short code. You don't need to do that anymore. You can build it all on the fly here. And the settings that you get here, how many slides do you want to show? You can pick a number. How many slides on scrolling? You got your settings for your autoplay, hovering, the speed, all of that. You've also got options to add in navigation if you want and pagination. This is... I mean, I'm not even going to go full blown into every little bit of it because there's not much to say other than the fact that you can drop whatever you want into here. You could even drop in like HTML if you're going to have a Calendly bookings facility in there. And the other key thing is that each one of these is a container. So if I go to slide number two, obviously we're going to centralize it. I could even go over here to slide number one go over to the container and say, actually, we don't want it to be columnar or vertical. You could set it up as a row, go and activate the wrap. I mean, basically it puts you back to where you were, but what if you wanted the button to be next door to the heading for a particular type of styling? You can do that. And that's what is so cool about this. It's using containers. You have full blown flexibility here. Another thing that Elementor have enabled in version 3.14 beta is static content within a loop grid. So I've dropped in a loop grid. I'm now going to go and pick one of my post templates. That's a very basic one with just an image and a heading. Now, if you've been following videos, you should know that we can also apply an alternate template. Let's go and add in a new template. I'm actually going to create one from scratch just to show you how simple this is. Okay, we're just going to hit create template, hit save. I'm not going to do very much more to this except just add in a bit of a text editing and we'll drop in a button as well. I've added that template back into my original loop grid. Now at the moment it is just text and a button so you could be advertising an advert, a banner, it could be pointing to a particular item, it could be something about you or a subscribe form even that's kind of positioned in between your posts. I've also said position it in grid item number two. If I put it in three it will go over to three. We'll just leave it as two for now. I am now also going to say static item position like that and here's where it gets really interesting now okay now I'm going to duplicate my latest post three times actually I'm only going to do it twice and I'm now going to publish them then I'm going to refresh my page and healthy lifestyle which was visible here is now here here and here because it's repeated but notice this item over here it has not moved out of position it is statically placed in position number two so if I was to go in position say an advert or a subscribe form over here in position number three no matter how many times I update my post or my products or how whatever is feeding into this it will remain in position and I think that is fantastic. It again opens up opportunities on how you can be really crafty 
and genius with your layouts. Another neat feature is the global style guide and this is going to make sense when I show you but what you need to do is go back into WordPress Elementor, go to your features and enable the global style guide. I didn't do this initially because I just wanted to make sure you understood the loop stuff that we're doing before in the carousel but this is really really good. We are now on a brand new page and you know the drill with global colors and global fonts right you click the hamburger you go to site settings and you would go to global colors fonts but watch this now when I click global colors I get this it's bringing over all of my colors on this fake test website that I have and it starts to give me a better example of what they look like. By the way, if you don't like that, you can disable it. But I think this is really neat because it starts to like really demonstrate your color range. And if you realize the color's not right, you can go over here, click it and then go and change on the fly or put in a hex code. And the same for the global fonts as well. By the way, they are actually the same screen. So when you go to global fonts, you scroll down and now you'll see the items over here. However, you can also just click the anchor to take you down. One here at the moment, we've got railway as our primary font. If I was to go in and pick Times New Roman, I can now see the style. And of course, you can change the sizing to get a better appreciation. But if you've watched any of my previous videos in the global fonts, I only like to set the font family. And then I go and do the styling later on with a bit of clamp for responsive styling. But just to get a better appreciation of your fonts and your colors, the Global Style Guide is a nice, neat little addition to the Elemental family. It doesn't stop there. It keeps going on and on with what they're giving us in the 3.14. Normally, if you wanted to add any items onto your page, you would have to drag it. Well, you don't have to do that now. You can just click it and it will appear. That is so cool. What if you're working on a page and then you decide I want to add in a new page? You normally go back into WordPress, write pages, add page, edit with Elementor. If you go to the top bar, hit the chevron pointing down, you can now add in a new page. By the way, if you are working on a page, it will ask you to save before it throws you over to a brand new page. And before anyone says I really hate that wording there, Elementor page, hashtag 1232, Go and click the cog and you can go and change the name. Here's where things get really interesting. When the new nestable tabs was bought out, there was a little bit of a problem with it in that if you went and set it up to look like this, and then you flipped over to mobile, we had this going on where it almost became like an accordion. And a lot of people did not like that, myself included. So I'm going to click on the tabs, go to additional settings, and I am going to say there is no breakpoint now. So if that's how it looks on the desktop, when you go to the mobile, it will also resemble that. Now, I know what you're saying. It looks nothing like that, but you would work on the size of your font, your padding, because you can shrink it down. And there will come a point where it will start wrapping. There's not a lot you can do about that. But that, for me, is better than this accordion style that we had, which if you had like lots of tabs, it became a little bit annoying with scrolling up and down. So... Thank you, Elemental, for taking that into account. If you're paying attention, you will notice the horizontal scroll, another new feature. So if I go and enable that, and just for the sake of it, I'm just going to duplicate the tab three many, many times. You can now start the horizontal scroll. Now, I have to say, though, it's a neat feature, but I personally don't think it's completely user friendly to do that. So if I was you and you don't have to take any of my advices, I would not actually have the horizontal scroll on. I think that's going to work better, especially when you've worked on the styling because it's all visible on one page. I haven't covered off everything that they've done here, but I'm really impressed by, again, the updates that Elemental are bringing out. If you want to go and play with it, go and play with it. Elemental 3.14 beta. Take care. I'm Imran Web Squadron. See you soon. Never brave, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, dish hand me the back, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.